We might get ourselves into trouble if we tell our viewers just to put wires together until lights come on. <laughs> it will be fine. Hello guys and welcome back to Tearspec TV. In the reveal video for Nissus Freelander, we mentioned that we recently received some parts from Tough Rock for both your discovery and my Defender. Unfortunately, when we went to fit them, as we said, we didn't fit them because there was nothing to fit them to. Yeah, I was gone. This, yeah, rust. Um, but of course, we can still fit the bits to the Defender, so that's what we're going to do today. So, the main feature is going to be these headlights, Tough Rock's new Halo headlights, which I think they're called, calling Tornado lights, which will have a similar light pattern to what I've got, uh, got now with the, the Halo pattern that seems to be oh so popular on Instagram. Um, but they should be a bit brighter than what I've got currently got fitted, so I look forward to testing those out. And to go with that, these aren't Tough Rock uh, bits. But to go with them, I bought some black stainless steel headlamp bezels because what I've got on there now are chrome and uh, rusting and don't look very good. So we will replace those. And then going back to Tough Rock bits here, we've got some new uh, mud flaps because right now I've got matte mud flaps on the back, gloss on the front and the ones on the front. The decals are starting to peel after everything they have been through. So we'll replace the mud flaps with some nice, sh uh, not shiny because they're matte, but smart new ones, which will look good. Uh, and then lastly, we've got some repeater guard, side indicator guards as well, which have the Tough Rock logo on there as well, which is very nice. So that if I ever do damage my wing once again, at least we know that the indicators should survive. So in the paper we've got the H4 switch here it comes with different ones uh, if you've got the h13 or the h4 you got this adapter piece in between we're not going to use that as we already got the h4 adapter for but other than that we've got one blue wire here which doesn't say anything about in the paper thing this is just like a generic one for the different ones uh, the light he has uh, so we're just going to take this one and try and put some power through it some 12 volt and see what lights up if it's the indicator, of course, it will be orange around it. If it's a daytime running light, that just needs to come on when the ignition is on as well. So we're just going to test that out and see what the thing, this wire makes light up or what it goes to. So while this is just having a fiddle with the wiring, I thought I'd just come over here and give a comparison between the old and the new. And not necessarily the lights so much, but these bezels. Because you can see these ones here have completely corroded. And we've got the new black ones here, which are stainless steel. So hopefully they will stay looking that good. And continuing on from the three theme in the previous video where, where I went through all the changes uh, for this new Defender, you know, that those black bezels will just look really, really smart with everything else that's been done, along with the new headlights where we get to keep the awesome halo pattern that seems to be so popular on Instagram when I show share pictures of it. Uh, so I look forward to getting that look in because that is just going to look so much neater than that setup, I think. And also, these should be a bit brighter as well. So far from what we've seen, they are certainly very, very bright, even with just the daytime running lights. So look forward to giving those a try. Uh, we found that the blue wire here is for the daytime running light. Uh, these lights does not have the orange ring for the turn signal, otherwise it would be two. And now we only got one. Uh, and remembering back how we put on the other lights, we had like a piggyback wire going across here to each one. Uh, but this wire we need to hook up into this red one for the uh, position lights. And that way when the position light comes on in the first click of the light switch in the cabin, then the daytime running light should also come on. And when you put it all the way forward, the H7 connector here will make sure that you get a high and low beam on it. So it's only this wire connecting to that one in a safe and good uh, fashion so we don't get any shorts. And of course as well as uh, this one also needs to get covered in some kind of tape or uh, material so it doesn't short out because that's going to be a live wire uh, when doing that. Uh, quite, quite generous with the wire length, we're probably only going to be using about here. Uh, for the wire length, just so you can get the headlights out of the socket and uh, move around with them. So we're going to cut about here and then solder that onto this bit and do the exact same on the other side and we should have new headlights in.
So the new lights are in the process of fitting the bezels and lining everything up in there can be a bit fiddly but we've got it all sorted now and in a second I think this will just walk through uh, some of the details on that part but they're looking really really good so in a moment we can take the satisfying moment of peeling that off and then putting everything back together and finishing off with the last couple of bits that need fitting as well. So just to clarify uh, how to install the headlights into these uh, mounting brackets and onto the front of the Defender itself. Uh, first we've got the bezel around here which we swapped out for another one. Uh, these are chromed but as you can see they're still rusty. You can also get them in stainless steel or the black ones that Liam got look really really nice with their black surroundings and headlights. These, these are the old headlights I'm just pointing out. Um, when you put them on you need to get a fasting kit as you can see how old are these headlights? About three years? Headlights? Yeah. Yeah, three years. Yeah, about three years. You can already see they're quite rusty on these uh, small tabs here holding it in place. Uh, so you'll need to get this part number here and get two of those as kits I'll for each side. I'll put it in the description. Yeah, I'll put it in, this, in the description. Uh, and then you need to line them up. You've got these two round circular, uh, half uh, circular things here. And then you've got the actual mounting plate for it. Uh, so you simply just put them over and it locks onto it each side. Uh, as you can see you've got two ones down there and then there to kind of mark them where they are. Uh, and then you just need to rotate the bezel to that one lines up, that one lines up and that one lines up. Uh, and with that you then got the adjuster holes which are that one, that one and that one. Uh, of course you need to get one screw holding upwards and one on the side so you can do it that way and that way. So, uh, correct the, the lights but that is kind of how you do it. Um, remember to take all the wires and search through all the uh, gaskets and the rubber things and uh, the headlight housing uh, before you start tightening everything down otherwise you have to redo it. Quite annoying. Uh, but yeah, quite easy to install. I would, out of 10 I would probably rate about 3. You need some basic tools but pretty much just touching wires together and see if you get light and then that way you can source out. We yeah, might get ourselves into trouble if we tell our viewers just to put wires together until lights come on. <laughs> it will be fine. It's just electricity, only 12 volts. But yeah, that was the headlights. Now we just need to put the front on and then I think we'll move on to putting these nice tough rocks on. Do you, do you want anything like background on it? No, I think it would just be body color, that's fine. Yeah, just body color. Because what you can do is put like a like some kind of colored paper or Neon tape. pink to put behind there and of course you can't see it but then it will light up kind of what you put in the bag of it it's quite a cool idea to do it that way so we'll keep it green so the light surrounds are back in now let's turn on the halos because that's what we all really want to see isn't it put that on and there we go we have the daytime running lights or the halos as they are known which should look great in pictures as the previous ones did. Hopefully these ones are a little bit more uh, bright, but we'll of course test that out later on when it gets dark. And if we put it on, let's go high beam, and then we can see the whole uh, unit has lit up there, every part of it. So hopefully that is bright. And also just worth noting that we seem to be making good use of the checker plating uh, as it is intended with tools and everything because before we would have just been putting that straight onto the paintwork. So glad that that's actually being used properly. Now it's time to go onto these things I think. So in the kit, of course, you get the, uh, the protectors themselves, which are quite high quality. They're not plastic or flimsy or anything like that. They're quite sturdy. It'll definitely take a, a hit. Other than that, you get the four screws, uh, self-tapping screws into it. So you just need to drill. I think we used a two and a half mil, uh, millimeter drill bit to make the holes, and that really did the job for them. They're not coming off. Uh, other than that, you get this little uh, Torx uh, head. Of course, it's called the Torx TT10, uh, and as you can maybe see on some other close-up, there's a tiny hole right in the middle of it, uh, and you need to keep this head uh, as is vital to getting these off again or changing them out, whether if you want some other ones or if you uh, dented them or whatever the reason is. So keep this one, save it somewhere, 
very precious where you can then forget about it in about two years time uh, because you can't take them off without having this otherwise you have to drill them out or cut them off and that will definitely also hurt the the fender itself so this goes into the little bag like that that will be safe forever so last but not least it is time to swap out the mud flaps We've got glossy ones on the front here and you can see the decals are also starting to peel slightly after everything we've put them through so if we come around to the back we've got a full brand new set front and rear um, so that they will all be matching this is just starting to put the first one on down there and if you want your very own TSPEC TV Tough Rock mud flaps I'll put a link down in the description to where you can buy them um, and if you need them for a vehicle other than a Defender, then you can contact Tough Rock and they will gladly make some up for you. Or if you want Tough Rock mud flaps with your own logo or design, then again, you can contact them and they will sort them out for you because they do a lot of options, whether it's just a logo like this, or if you want them in a completely different color other than just black or you want them glossy, uh, whatever, they can sort that out for you. And these are super flexible as well. They are indestructible if you compare them to the standard mud flaps that come on the Defender, which I've been through a couple of before from off-roading because they just don't have a lot of flex in them unlike these which are very very durable by comparison so here we can see the difference between the matte and the glossy mud flaps although I say that this one is so dirty you almost can't tell um, but personally I think the matte ones just suit this Defender better and what I've done with it so happy to have those on and then we've also of course got the Gwyn Lewis mud shields we fitted as well there for double protect protection for all the mud at the front we are now done. The lights, the indicator guards and the full mud flap set have all now been fitted. And interestingly, we've got a pretty much stock TD5 Defender of similar age parked right here and in the same color as well. So it's just interesting to draw the comparison between these two stock and this. And just at a glance, you can see how much this has changed and particularly recently how much it has changed. And I can tell you there are a lot more mods to come for this as well. So the look is going to be uh, expanded on even more and we are really really excited to share that with you and how well, what's coming and how it's going to look and how it's going to perform but the video is not over yet we of course need to see how the lights perform out in the dark so we're going to jump ahead now to night time So I tell a bit of a lie. We are not jumping ahead to nighttime because I realized that finishing this video off in the dark wouldn't exactly be ideal. However, I did go out last night to test out the new lights and I'm happy to say they are really, really effective and very bright, especially compared to what I had fitted before. And I did take some pictures and videos to try and demonstrate this. However, I don't really think they do them any justice, unfortunately, so you'll kind of have to take my word for it. But I was never that impressed with the brightness of the old Halo headlamps. I had, although they look great, they didn't perform as well as I would have liked. Um, however, these ones really are bright in all forms, you know, whether daytime running lights, main beam or high beam, um, and also maintain that awesome halo look as well. Obviously brightness is the most important factor when it comes to lights, but I really do like the way these look. They're much more modern and subtle than what I had on previously. I would say a couple more things which I haven't mentioned so far. They are up to EU standards as well as for German TUV or TUV, uh, Germany's kind of MOT inspection system, which is quite strict about what modifications you have on a car. So they are legal in Germany and they are left-hand drive specific in this case. So you will need to choose whether you want right-hand drive or left-hand drive when ordering them. And then if we have the stainless steel black uh, bezels in there as well, which will last a lot longer and stay looking nicer, much longer than those old manky previous ones I had and just suit the look of the vehicle so much better. Coming around, we've got the new Tough Rock indicator guards, which will ensure that they stay protected if I ever damage a wing again. And last but not least, the TSPEC TV Tough Rock mud flaps as well, which looks so clean at the moment that I almost don't want to get them dirty. It's also worth noting that I have stainless steel Tough Rock mud flap brackets on the rear as well which aren't new 
Uh, I think I put those on at the start of the year, but they still look as good as they did when they were new. And up front, we're using the Gwyn Lewis Mud Shield kit to mount the mud flat brackets because we fitted that, I think, end of last year. Uh, so that's what's hold the brackets on on the front. But overall, really, really happy with the way this looks. There are some big changes coming to this Defender. This front end is going to look a little bit different, hopefully quite soon, hopefully before the end of the year. So watch this space and that is it for this time let us know what you think of the new mods down in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video